Welcome to Target Market Insights, the multifamily and marketing podcast. Each week, John Kasman interviews multifamily and marketing experts to teach you how to find the best places to invest, attract investors, and grow your portfolio. You are listening to Target Market Insights with your host, John Kasman. Welcome to Target Market Insights. I'm your host, John Kasman, and I want to thank you for joining us for another great episode. If you're enjoying the podcast, do me a favor, take a minute and leave us a five-star rating and review. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Now, today we're going to be talking to my man, Josh Inglis. Josh Inglis is an investor and real estate agent with eXp Realty from the Chicago land area. Josh has flipped over 100 properties, builds new construction homes as a builder, owns a roofing business, owns a small rental portfolio, owns a video company, and is the number one best-selling author on Amazon. Josh is busy. In addition to all of that, Josh also hosts the meetup the first Tuesday of every month in Chicago, which you can learn more about at fliptoriches.com. Let's welcome to the show, Josh Inglis. Hey, thank you, John. Appreciate you having me. This is a big honor, man. I uh, really appreciate uh, you having me on your show. And um, and if you're listening to this podcast, too, make sure to reach out to John about speaking at your group because I got a lot of amazing feedback when you came out to speak at my group. So much appreciation on that, too. Well, thank you for having me. And absolutely, it's a pleasure to, to talk to you and finally get you on the show. Why yeah. don't you take 30 seconds? I went through a lot of different things that you own and you're affiliated with. Yeah. Why don't you take 30 seconds, kind of elaborate on who you are? So, um, again, I'm, uh, I, I kind of got my hand on a lot of things. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a realtor. I have a construction company builder. Um, I've kind of found, um, at least for me, um, I thrive when I'm starting new businesses or new ventures. Um, I've always kind of had shiny object syndrome, but now when I have shiny object syndrome, it's kind of like, all right, let me start a new business in this, in this particular area because it's a strength that we might have. And now it's a service we can provide. So, you know, I think there's a lot of people in real estate that, uh, might have full-time jobs, but you've got some talents. Well, you can take those talents and create a business out of it in addition to your rental portfolio or whatever you're building to. Um, or, you know, you keep working your job, uh, you know, if you're looking at getting those normal loans. But if you're talented in one area or another, I suggest adding that to your portfolio too, because that's a way to meet uh, people. For example, if you've got, if you're an amazing home and, you know, you know, construction, maybe you can become a home inspector, you're going to meet a lot of real estate investors, a lot of agents. It's a way to grow your portfolio. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of people get caught up in, hey, I'm going to flip houses and they uh, they miss other opportunities that might be out there um, within the realm of real estate. So um, I think that's one area that I've really succeeded in is um, like, hey, there's an opportunity here. Let me uh, Let me go after that. Yeah. And Josh, to that point, I mean, you mentioned the shiny object syndrome, right? And that's one of the things that derails most people. You speak Mm -hmm. about it almost in a positive light that you can see new opportunities, quickly recognize how you can take advantage of them. And it's more of a pivot off of other things, other skills that you have, as opposed to something that becomes a distraction from some of the projects you're already working on. You talked about being an investor, being an agent, owning a roofing company, owning a video company. I mean, there are a lot of things that don't necessarily sound like they all go together. Mm -hmm. How exactly do you manage kind of the growth and pivoting from one channel or one approach to the next? Yeah, well, definitely you got to have an awesome team. So I'm in business with my brother. So it's definitely not just me. And then his wife is also in the business. So uh, you know, a lot of times I say me or I, well, I should really be saying we or us, um, because I, if, if just one person, you're not going to be able to achieve all that. So you want to surround yourself with like-minded people, high achievers, you know, for the video production business, I work with, uh, George Cuevas, who you probably know he's out in California. I also got an in-house guy here. So I'm not really, you know, we're going to go out and make a video for somebody. I'm not going out there with my video equipment to make that video. He goes, he does what he needs to do. I trained him on how to do that. I'm very hands off on that business. I just trained him how to do it the way I did it, the way I learned it from, from George Cuevas. So, 
So, so to me, it was something when, uh, I'll give you an example of the video business as an example. So one of the things I do when I sell a house, whether it's my house or another investors or a homeowner, we make a video. And so, uh, George told me like, Hey man, you know, uh, I'm thinking about moving to California and I'm like, Oh dude, that's awesome. But crap, man, now I don't, I'm not going to have my, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get the videos that I wanted the way I wanted them. So I'm like, man, I, uh, you know, I can make these videos, of course, um, but then that's going to take a lot of time. So, but I learned, it forced me to learn how to do it. But at the same time that I'm like, Hey, I can't be doing all of this. Let me make a business out of it and train somebody to do exactly what I'm doing and then have them do that as well. And now that's a business, you know, that's essentially, you know, I'm involved somewhat because people are coming to me to get videos made and that sort of thing. But yep. it's not something that um, I'm out there in the trenches going out there to film and going out there and editing. Unless it's my own stuff and it's a project that means a lot to me. You know, a lot of times I'll do a lot of the videos I make for the funny stuff. A lot of times I'm doing it just because I'm already there. I've got a camera you know, sometimes if I've got another actor with me, I mean, we're just one person's holding the camera, the other person's acting. So, um, that, that's, that's, so there, there was an opportunity there. Like I took something that was so crucial in my business because that was something that made me stand out from other agents was these awesome videos I was putting out. I'm like, Hey, I can't, I can't not continue to deliver this. You know, I, I can't make an excuse of like, Oh, my video guy's gone now. So I can't, do these awesome videos. I'm like, all right, I'm going to learn it. And then I'm then going to outsource it. So, um, and bring it in house. Yeah, Josh, let's dig into that. Cause I think that's the, the important thing for me is how you've leveraged video to stand out. And that's kind of the thing you started to hit on, right. Is, yeah. you know, developing it and turning it into a company. And to your point, you went from kind of investor to agent to, uh, working with other people, doing the videos, creating the video company, the roofing company. It sounds like a lot of the companies and entities that you've created are, I won't say necessity, but they were born out of things you were already doing and recognizing mm -hmm. that other people could use the same resources. Absolutely. But I want to start more so with how you've been able to stand out. And that's something that I've always admired about the work that you've done. Um, you found a way to really create a space for yourself, a name for yourself, uh, starting with the flipping and the investing. But as you've grown from just the investor to the agent, um, I remember I went to one of your meetups a while, maybe probably two years ago, but you talked a lot about marketing and I do want to just drill into that. Talk to me about why you feel it's important to do leverage marketing and why you think it's important to stand out. Yeah, that's a, a great question. Um, I think now more than ever, um, social media, and, and this is one of the presentations I give, I don't know the stats off the top of my head, but I think by the time somebody passes away, they're going to spend like four years on Facebook, something crazy. And like three years on YouTube and like two years on Instagram. So what does that tell you? I mean, people are pretty much addicted to social media. It's literally, I believe in Australia and South Korea, they've literally labeled social media the same as alcoholism, which it is. I mean, it's, it's an addiction. I mean, most people are on social media. Now, I'm, I want to say I'm taking advantage of that, but the fact that people are on social media, I'm going to be putting out content because that's where people are spending time. Um, people are on social media if you're not on social media, you're missing out because that's where everybody's at. And um, what I've found for me personally, um, I feel like, um, you know, people, they, uh, I don't know, it, it's just a way to stand out. So just like I talked about the videos that I'm putting, putting out, it's a differentiation factor of like when somebody's looking to hire, let's say a realtor, for example, um, if they're connected with me on Facebook, I don't even have to be like, Hey, you should hire me. Like the fact that they're connected with me and seeing my stuff, like to me, I'm top of mind all the time. So if you ever read the book, it's called the millionaire real estate agent by Gary Keller. He talks about, you should touch someone like 25 times a year. And again, I could have the number off, 
Um, but that he's like, you know, he recommends sending them a mailer and popping by their house and sending them gifts and birthday cards and all that. Well, with social media, I'm able to touch somebody 365 days a year. Um, I don't have to do all that. It's, it's not, you know, I'm taking, essentially, I'm taking the lazy way <laughs> in doing it and leveraging social media to make all those touches for me because I'm not an agent that goes out there and I might send out a Christmas card and I, uh, I was good at one point about sending out birthday. I don't even do that anymore. People are connected with me on social media and they see my stuff all the time. And so logically, when they're looking to list a house, they see this, I'm showing my success. Like I'm, I'm providing inspiration, I'm doing humor, I'm sh but all of this at the same time, I'm showing my success. And people, I want people to think like, hey, if I'm gonna list a house, the only logical solution is to work with Josh. And social media allows me to, to do that without having to do sending mailers and, and and i'm not saying that that's not important i'm definitely not saying that because that definitely works it's, it's a strategy i've used it it works um but it allows me again i guess in a way to be lazy in a way but i'm leveraging a tool that everybody's on every single day yeah i, I don't think you're being lazy i think what you're being is laser focused you know yeah. exactly where your audience is you know the types of information and content they're consuming you're connecting i think what really stands out to me is the fact that you're leveraging video yeah. to do this the lazy way is simply to make a post right or yeah. to uh, to post a couple pictures and when people say hey just sold this house and post a picture but you've taken it to the next level by doing the video. So let's mm -hmm. let's transition and talk more about videos. And I want to start with videos for the housings and the sales and as an agent. And then I want to transition and talk more about kind of the creative fun videos you're doing. Mm -hmm. But let's just start with kind of where you were originally started, which is kind of documenting the house, shooting the videos of these properties, doing it for your clients as well. Why did you do video as opposed to what most agents were doing, which is kind of just showing static images mm -hmm. um, and really just kind of doing the overall write-up. Maybe they're doing flyers, open houses. You chose to use video. Talk to me about what kind of videos you did, what you did to stand out, and why you felt video was an important tool to use to stand out. That's a great question. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to answer your question, but I'm also going to bring up something you brought up, which is about static images of like just sold, right? So I see this on a lot of agents' uh, feeds of like, oh, just listed, just sold, just listed, just sold. The problem with that is it's essentially it's spam. Um, people might like it once or twice, but eventually they're going to tune out of that. You're not really, I mean, you're not really providing value by doing that. Um, you're showing evidence of success, but at the same time, it's very spammy. It's, um, it's very transparent what you're doing. <laughs> so, so taking that to video, what I'm doing is, is twofold. Number one, it's, you know, literally marketing a house in the best way possible. Um, so if I go on a listing presentation, let's say I, I don't know the person. It wasn't even a referral. Maybe they found me on the internet. Uh, maybe they saw one and some of my YouTube videos even get people to call me, you know, but so let's say I'm meeting with them in person. This is when I was brand new as an agent, only been licensed for a couple months. I'm sitting there showing them my listing presentation and showing them videos of houses and how I was going to market their house. And then they're like, even if they met with, 10 other agents, none of those agents had anything like that. So these agents are here. They could have been in business for 20, 30 years. I'm already up here. They don't know that I'm a brand new agent. They assume that I'm very experienced and I know what I'm doing just simply based on the fact of how I was going to market their home. Um, so to me, it was literally just how do I separate myself from the masses of real estate agents and competition. How am I going to elevate myself? And at the same time, not just get the business, but then also get future potential business. And I found that video was that medium. So I'm, I'm simply doing it for number one, getting the listing. Number two, selling the home. I've sold homes off of the video. 
And number three is gaining new business. How um, do you see, Josh, how do you see the results from that? I mean, are you seeing stronger closing rates or what kind of results are you seeing by leveraging video, maybe in comparison to either the average or other realtors that do not use the same video and marketing tactics that you're using? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's um, at least at this point, I mean, if I go on a listing presentation, I pretty much, I know I'm going to have it. And <laughs> I go on a listing presentation knowing, and, and, and here's the way I present myself. I present myself in a way of, and I don't say this, but this is my, um, how, I, how I'm speaking is like, you can hire any agent, but it'd be foolish to hire anyone else than me. So I go in there with such confidence that any other agent that they hire is not going to do as good of a job as I am. And then they can see that through what I'm showing them, the example of the photos, the virtual staging, the videos. It's kind of to them, you know, again, unless we have like a really bad, our personalities don't match or there's something going on or they're just really unrealistic with their, you know, their pricing of their house. I'm not going to take that sort of listing. But um, when, when we meet, um, I go in there like, you don't hire me, you know, you're a fool. And again, I don't say that, but... <laughs> I exude that through my, my presentation and my dealings with them. And then I show them, you know, I always say, you can tell people you're going to do this and you're going to do that and you're going to do this, but uh, you know, talk is cheap, show them. So, Hey, here's a video of a house I sold in your neighborhood. You know, this was listed for over a year, you know, before with another agent, a local agent, I may not even be from that market. Um, and yet I'm the one that ends up selling it is because of that, um, superior marketing that we're doing and, and, and seeing is believing. I mean, that's, that's really what it is. I mean, people are very visual. So, you know, showing them and that's what I tell brand new agents. It's like, Hey, if you want to get, you know, you could be an agent for literally, I'm I, uh, an agent just joined, um, my brokerage, she, she wanted to become an agent. She'd been wanting to become an agent for many years. And somebody reached out to her. She's only been licensed for like a week. So she came on, worked with me. I created like, we were already there creating a video for me. So we created one for her. She showed that person a video. She's only been an agent for a week. And now she's going on a listing appointment after being licensed for a week. Because, and this person has already met with other real estate agents. And, and, and other agents are discounting their commissions. I'm like, don't discount your commission. I'm like, show them the video. And then like that, and then the professional photos, you're going to get the listing and you're going to charge them a full commission. Um, you know, a lot of people are trying to gain business now by discounting. Um, you don't, you don't have to do that when you deliver um, you know, the types of things that I deliver and, and the things I talk about people to deliver, um, you don't have to discount your, your services and you shouldn't. I, I love it. And because the, the thing you're hitting on is really adding value. We talk a lot about adding value, but it's not necessarily like there's a minimum expectation that the, the seller expects you to post on the MLS and take mm -hmm. photographs and host open houses and things like that. What they want is to sell the house, you know, and yeah. if you're just going to do what everyone else is doing, they're not confident that you are going to get the house sold because every house on the market is going to be doing the exact same thing. Yep. So how do you help them elevate above every other house that's being listed? And it's by you coming with the marketing plan that's above every other house that's on the market. Yeah. So that's the way you're able to do that. And they're willing to pay, the, pay for that as long as you deliver that value. And for mm -hmm. them, that's the certainty that, hey, this is the best marketing plan I've seen. This guy's going to go over the top with everything that we can imagine to get the right eyeballs on this property. He's demonstrated results, and that's going to give us comfort. And I want all of our listeners to think about it from your perspective, whether you're an agent, whether you're an investor, whatever your business is, think about how you can leverage marketing to go above and over the top, and even video, because seeing is believing, as Josh mentioned. And if you can demonstrate that through visual cues, it's going to be much easier for someone to reach that conclusion than just going off of a presentation or words or other things that you may have. And then also those testimonials. If you've got proof Bango. that you know yeah. it from someone else, that's going to inspire confidence that you can get the same results for them. Yeah. You, bingo, bingo, bingo. The testimonials, I was going to mention that earlier. I forgot to bring that up. So 
I suggest if you're a real estate agent or investor, video testimonials are so important. You can get um, written testimonials. People, who knows if they're real or not? Like people, people know like there's a lot, like if you go on Amazon and look up a product right now, like I have to like, when I'm looking to buy a product on Amazon, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out when people posted the comments where they all the same. Like I'm trying to figure out if they're real reviews or fake reviews. So written reviews right now to me are trash. Mm -hmm. There's, there's definitely, there's value to like Google reviews and yell, you know what I mean? There, there's some value. I'm not saying they're, they're worthless, but a video testimonial is that next level. So give you an example, whether you're a realtor or an investor, you should be getting a testimonial at the closing table. This is when people are the happiest. I'll give you an example if you're a real estate investor. You might have told them you were going to close in in 14 days, but it took you 30 days to close it. You had some hiccups. You negotiated them harder than they initially would have liked. But man, they're at the closing table. They're happy. They're going to give you the best testimonial right then and there at the closing table. So so literally, I don't have my phone with me. Whip out your phone and get that testimonial. Hey, how is it working with my company? Oh, it was great. They closed. We're here at the closing. I'm so happy. And I'm able to move on to my life. And I'm able to move to Florida. You know, it's 20 degrees outside today. I'm so happy. And people then go to your website or your, you, you, you need to post that testimonial, upload it to YouTube, and then put, post it on your website. And then what you need to do too, the next level to that is when you meet with people like, hey, I'm really looking forward to meeting with you in a couple of days. Check out some of my happy clients that I've worked with in the past. Um, and then they have a link to all of your testimonials. And now you have third-party proof that you are legit versus text on a website, which may or may not even be real. That's a great tip. And I, and I think especially for the moment, right? The moment when that client, investor, uh, that person's the happiest is the moment you've solved whatever challenge they were looking for. So mm -hmm. if you got a passive investor in a deal, the moment you close, the moment you deliver, you know, that first check to them, it's a great time to ask for a testimonial. If Absolutely. you sell a, a client's house, you know, at the closing table, a great time to ask for a testimonial. But right after you deliver that value for that individual, it's a great time because they're going to be the happiest. They're going to be in the moment. And I love your point about just whipping out the phone because sometimes we try to make it really sleek and clean and sexy. And yeah. sometimes it's like, just get the testimonial, get yeah. their energy, get the raw emotion captured in the moment and having it on video is going to go much further because it is real. It is authentic. People can see it. It verifies itself by being video versus, you know, just text on a page where it could be something you wrote and just threw a random name against it. Yeah. But uh, just making sure that you have that. I think those are great points to add there. Josh, you've leveraged video in a way that I haven't seen anybody in the real estate space. And that's one of the main reasons we brought you on today. Um, besides just knowing you and knowing how great of a guy you are. But <laughs> in <right>. addition to <laughs> leveraging video for properties for agents, you've actually created some very fun, very engaging videos that have been seen hundreds of thousands of times. I know you got one video that's been seen over 400,000 times. So talk to me about kind of that evolution and going from creating video to sell a property to creating video that is more fun, humorous, and engaging and really allows you to stand out. Yeah. Um, well, so, so I mentioned, you know, people are spending, and again, I don't, I don't know what the exact hour is, but I think the average person now I think spends like two hours, north of two hours on Facebook. It's something ridiculous. Um, so one thing you got to keep in mind, though, is you're competing with, and I, I always joke about this, but I'm like, you're competing with cat videos, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, I even, I don't know what it is about cat videos. I'll even watch cat videos. And even before, like, I have cats now. I have two cats. But even before I owned a cat, like, I would watch <laughs> cat videos. I don't know why they're like... They're just cute to watch, but you're competing with cat videos, so it can't be boring. And so, like, I had, uh, I'll give you an example. My first property that I really did something really silly for, it was this, uh, it was like this dirty car dealership. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to, like, do something really silly. And, like, 
make fun of the fact that like it's a dirty place so like I'm like, yeah, you know, so I, I like talk about how it's like, you know, I do the Dr. Evil thing. I'm like, this property is selling for $1 million. And then the camera, the camera guy, which is my buddy, he's like, no, no, it's $100,000. <laughs> like what? <laughs> and then, and then I talk about like, oh, this property has great traffic count. I don't know what that is, but look at all these cars behind me, you know, they're flying by. <laughs> and then I'm like, this property has state-of-the-art ventilation and it's literally a fan, like a household fan, like a $10 fan just blowing. And, you know, the camera zooms up and looks at the fan. And so making fun of the fact, you know, again, it was like a cheap, cheap property, right? But not hiding the fact that like, oh, this is the best property you've ever seen, you know? It's like, no, this is like, you're kind of making fun of the fact that like this property has flaws, but yet it's at a really sexy price. Um, and look at all the traffic, you know, like even though that's a joke, you know, I'm actually showing an advantage of that property. And I was a little, that was my first like really silly video I ever did in real estate. And um, I was a little nervous about posting it, but like literally I got so much amazing feedback from that video and comments and likes and um, that I'm like, man, actually, all right, uh, maybe I'll do it again. And so again, I make another really silly video and same thing, amazing engagement, shares, likes, you know, comments, all that good stuff. And to me, it, I, it really opened up that like, you know, people don't go to Facebook. So this, this is, this is my, um, I'd say this is my theory, but th I think this is true. I don't think people go to Facebook to learn. People go to Facebook for that little hit of dopamine <laughs> that, Oh, this person liked my comment, but they're also going there to be entertained. And so that's to me has been super crucial to, 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 why I do my videos kind of silly or out of the box or um, entertained or emotional, you know, something in that aspect. Um, and then when I do a serious video, people like they've seen my other videos, so they're almost watch it just because they think I'm going to do something crazy or it's going to be funny. So I'm getting my serious content out there along with my silly content. And then I'm having good engagement when I post something serious, because, you know, if you read, uh, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk's, um, book, crush it. Um, he talks about like, give value, give value, give value, give value, give value, give value, ask, give value, give value, give value, give value, give value, give value, ask. And what do I mean by ask? Well, that as might just be like, Hey, check out this blog article I wrote or check out, I'm talking about how you can make money in real estate by investing this way, or um, here's a testimonial from one of my clients, and then I'm doing social proof. But I'm not jamming that down people's throats of like just listed, just sold. I'm doing it in a fun, creative way, which then creates engagement. And now Facebook, LinkedIn, they look at me, um, I know they rate you somehow, I don't know if they have some sort of ranking system, but for example, if I had the same amount of friends as somebody else who posted just listed or just sold, Facebook is going to automatically show my stuff to more people because they look at that person as a spammer and they look at me as like somebody that's providing value. So I don't know, you know, I don't know how you're socially ranked, but there's definitely Facebook, like a post that I post is going to have more views no matter what that post is just simply because people have viewed my stuff more historically in the past yeah that's great great information great context there because you mentioned giving that that hit of dopamine right that's what facebook's looking for mm -hmm. they're looking to keep people on those platforms and not just facebook but i think facebook is probably uh more so than some of the other platforms really with their algorithm they're focused on yep. are people going to engage are they going to and it's engagement it's not just liking or whatever it truly is engaging with the content watching the videos commenting on the videos sharing the videos or whatever that content is they're looking for that and they're going to rank you higher so you know when you look at what you're doing in comparison to maybe an agent who's just posting that hey just sold 
um, where yes, you may get some likes, but you're not really getting a lot of comments. Maybe you're just getting a whole bunch of congratulations, but there's not really a dialogue. There's not really a lot of sharing and other things like that. You're going to get kind of the premium spot. And I think that's the big piece is figuring out what the platforms are looking for. I think oftentimes as marketers, we think about what we want to do and what we want to communicate and not so much in how do I add value to the viewer. And on Facebook, like you said, they want to be entertained. I don't want to read your serious you know, note about, you know, all the top 20 ways to evaluate, you know, if you got cracks in the basement. It's not really the platform I want to read that at, right? Mm -hmm. But you create a funny video of, you know, a contractor dismissing the cracks in the basement, mm -hmm. that can be way more engaging. So I think you find ways to take um, fun statements. And uh, the other thing you do really well is you take uh, uh, topics that the target audience, real estate investors or, or people in the real estate industry can really relate to. And I haven't seen anyone kind of poke fun at the industry in the way that you do. Uh, you know, you've yeah. got different types of videos out there. You know, of, uh, one, I know you've recently been doing kind of what bad fill in the blank do. So like what bad contractors do or what bad wholesalers say. And uh, I mean, those things that, again, if you are in this space, it's just humorous because you've, you've seen it. You've come you've across experienced it. it yeah. You've experienced it. And I think the other thing that you've done really well, and I don't, you, I'm, you may have been doing this before, but I just kind of started noticing myself, but you kind of engage people even before you shoot the content. So I've seen you post, hey, I'm going to be shooting this video. Give me some crazy ideas. things that you've heard. Yeah, give me some ideas of, you know, something a contractor said to you or an inspector has said to you, and you started to incorporate that into the videos. And the great thing about that is now I'm vested in the video. Hey, exactly. did, he, did he use the thing you that I it. said? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. did he use the thing that I said? Exactly. And, uh, you know, it's it's funny. And you did, by the way. I think I said something about I don't do roofs. And yeah, you, you, you yeah I, that was actually it. your line. Yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> I've heard a lot of inspectors say that, yeah. Yeah, so, so, but that's the thing where, again, and it's, you can, like you said, it can, um, you can call it cheating the system or whatever you want to say, but I mean, we're openly talking about it right now. I knew it, I commented, and I still wanted to see whether or not you used the line that I mentioned, right? And that's how you drive true engagement. You know, true engagement is, I can't wait to see this video now that Josh has put together, not just because of my line, but now I'm vested because... I commented, I saw the other yeah. people comment. I want to see how he pulled this thing off. And I think that's the other piece to it. If you're looking to truly drive engagement on social platforms, especially if you're using video, find ways to engage people even prior to shooting the content because now you have an audience that's waiting to see it, that yeah. is willing to share it. And I think even on that post you made, you had a ton of engagement oh, yeah. even before posting the video because you had a lot of people who have now seen your videos, have seen your content, and they're all responding. And they're that. like, oh, I'm excited. I can't wait to see it. I'm gonna, uh, like, oh, you're posting it Monday. I'll make sure to check your page. So literally – they're not waiting for it to go on my feed. They're going to my Facebook profile to see it, which is pretty insane. Yeah, that's crazy, man. And like I said, I mean, and I think that the takeaway here is to get the numbers you're doing, where you're getting, you're getting hundreds of thousands of views, thousands of shares, um, and really getting that level of engagement, you know, you have to be doing something that others aren't doing. And I think that you've put yourself out there in a way that, uh, especially in a professional setting, when you think about real estate investing and being an agent and, you know, coming across very proper and, and uh, buttoned up. And that's the thing we talked about before we hit the record button is I know you as a pretty buttoned up guy. So seeing you in this light uh, is a pretty pretty drastic change for me. I've seen you in almost a suit almost every time I've seen you. Yeah, so to yeah. see these videos with, with humor and having fun, um, was very interesting, but I think to that point, taking a subject matter, being very fun, being lighthearted. Uh, we talked to a woman uh, a couple of weeks ago, Alice Fever, and she talked about levity and leveraging levity to stand out and break free in what might otherwise be a kind of a mundane topic. And I think you've done an excellent job of that and have given our listeners um, a lot of great tips and strategies that they can look to employ to stand out in the same way. Josh, yeah. And I'll, I'll add to that. So, um, so also when somebody comments on your video, like I always say the minimum you should do is like their comment. You should also then thank them or like, Hey, that's really funny, Josh, keep it up. Or I can't wait to see your next one. So Facebook then rewards you for commenting on their posts because now, okay, that might just be one comment. 
now you comment on their comment. Now Facebook looks at that as two comments. And a way to cheat the system if you're really trying to get something to, to boost is be like, oh, hey, how's your kids doing? And then all of a sudden you've got 12 comments off of one comment literally having your conversation on Facebook. So always when somebody comments on your stuff, at a minimum you should be liking it. And then you should also, though, be engaging. So I always talk about engagement is key. So if somebody, if they take the time to comment on your post, you know, I don't comment on every comment I get, depending on what it is, but most of the time I try to make, make it a, a habit. So I'll tell you exactly what you, what you said is how this became a number one bestseller. This isn't the best book ever written. You know, it's probably not even the top hundred books that this, this, you know, I don't want to say this book is crap because I, I took time <laughs> to write it. <laughs> but like, this is not like, <laughs> now you got to spit your water out. But <laughs> But like, this is not the best book ever written. It's simply, I did it through social media. So doing exactly what you said. I like, hey, what do you guys, I have four ideas for a book cover. Which one do you think I should do? All right. Oh, you guys like that one. I really don't care. I'm going to do the one I like anyway. Here's, here's some different names I'm thinking of my book. What do you think it should be called? And then I have a bunch of people comment on that. I really don't care what they think either. But I'm, but again, I'm being very uh, <laughs> exaggerating a little bit. I take people's, <laughs> if, if you're listening to this and you engage in my content, I take all of your comments very seriously. <laughs> but, like before you do something, get people invested in it. And then what you do you have all these people that have commented on what you're saying. Hey, I'm releasing a book. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about this? Now you have a few hundred people that have commented on various posts you've done. And then you can then message them and say, hey, thanks so much for commenting. I'm releasing my book tomorrow and I'm doing it for 99 cents for the first day. Do you think somebody is willing to spend 99 cents if you've engaged with them? These are people I don't even know a lot of times. You know, somehow we're connected of a friend of a friend of a friend or whatever. But they're willing to invest 99 cents to make it a bestseller simply because they have skin in the game because they commented and then I engaged with them. That's how this became a bestseller on Amazon. It had nothing to do with the content. It was the fact that I leveraged social media did exactly what you said, previewing, like, hey, I'm releasing it. What do you think about this? And getting people's opinions and then commenting on it. And then also then right before I released it, messaging them, sending them the link, thanking them. Um, because, you know, again, it, that, that's really what it's all about. Josh, I love it, man. I, I don't think I've laughed that hard on this podcast. So thank you for helping me bring some levity hopefully, to the show as well. Hopefully I wasn't coffee. And <laughs> No, no, it's just water, but man, <laughs> that I really don't care what you say, but I'm just going to put it up here. <laughs> Not to say this is a crappy book, but hey, could have been better. I <laughs> uh, love it. 15 yeah. reasons your house won't sell. Is yeah. that right? 15 reasons your house hasn't sold. But hasn't yeah. sold. All right, yeah. cool. Definitely make sure we link to that crappy, not crappy book. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but no, but again, the, the tips here are great. I, I love the way you talk about understanding Facebook, the way the algorithms work, how to engage people and get them interested. And it's not just the algorithms, but it's truly how do you drive engagement and you need to get them vested, vested mm -hmm. in the idea, vested in your product, vested in whatever it is you're creating. So if you are launching a blog, a podcast, a video series or a book or anything else, think about every step along the way where can you engage people? Hey guys, I'm thinking of launching X, Y, Z. Have some, you know, what kind of things would you like to hear about? Uh, who should I interview? What would you like to know about? Which cover do you like best? Yep. Um, all of those different steps, you can engage people and then show them which one you selected based on, um, based on their responses. So by the time you're ready to launch, now you can make that ask to come and say, hey guys, that thing that I've been talking about for the last few weeks or the last couple of months is ready to go live tomorrow. Hey, would you mind ordering, leaving me a, a subscription or a review or whatever your ask is? 
Now you can do something like that and you can launch with the great groundswell that otherwise you wouldn't have. So phenomenal tips and tactics to help you elevate and really take advantage of some of these social platforms for your own liking. Josh, this has been a lot of fun. I want to transition now and get into our bullseye round. Are you ready for that? Yes, sir. How has a failure or apparent failure set you up for later success? Um, I think that's a great question. Um, I think a lot of people in real estate talk about their wins and naturally, you know, you talk about your wins a lot. Um, I failed a lot of times, uh, more, more times than I care to admit in, in real estate or anything. Um, what I try to do with any time I've like, okay, how do I not make that mistake again? Because there's like, there's the old saying you win or you learn. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, when I was starting out, I learned a lot more than I won. Uh, and it's because I, to be honest, I didn't really educate myself enough. Like, uh, I was like, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I'm like, oh, this is a great idea. I'm going to go out and buy houses and become a millionaire. Well, I didn't go to, I didn't even know RIAs and stuff like that existed. I didn't surround myself, at least, you know, I first started out. I didn't surround myself with people. And so really... I think starting out, I figured, hey, I can do this on my own. And I really found out that you need people. I mean, there's certain people that have opened doors for me. You know, there's one person responsible in my business for over 40 of my deals, one person. Uh So like sometimes, you know, uh, leverage your network. You know, there's that old saying, your network is your net worth so important so surround yourself attend you know you've got a meet up i've got a meet up uh breeze got an awesome meet up like put yourself in environments where you're networking with other like-minded individuals and amazing things happen that was the biggest mistake i made in my business early on is not surrounding myself with other entrepreneurs and other uh real estate investors and i to, to be quite honest i lost a lot of money because i didn't know what i didn't know um, so subscribing, you know, even like bigger pockets and there's so many resources now too that, that didn't necessarily exist when I started, but Rhea has been around forever, you know? Uh, but I didn't take the time to, to like, I, I saw something and, but I didn't take the time to develop that further. That was the mistake I made. I just jumped in without continually educating myself. So that's such a crucial, crucial piece. What is the book you've recommended or gifted the most in the last year? So the book I've probably given out and recommend, and this is more towards the, the, the realtor side, um, is the, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller. I do think that's a great book. I've read it two or three times. Again, I've taken a lot of his advice and I've tweaked it like for me towards um, social media. The book that I've recommended the most to people just to shift their mindset, and I'm not talking about realtors, I'm just talking about in in general is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That was the book that uh, made the biggest impact on me. And then this book I've given out the most because it's a crappy book. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> He's owning up the uh, 15 no, reasons why your house has a soul. It's an amazing book. It'll change your life. No. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. So those two books have been, you know, if you're looking at becoming a realtor, you know, uh, I'd recommend that book by Gary Keller. And then if you look at becoming a real estate investor, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but then don't just let that be your end all be all you then need to surround because that just gives you like a taste but at least it shifts your mindset and your thinking give me a digital or mobile resource you recommend for your business um for me i mean i use google docs for everything dropbox those two are super you know google docs i can access it on my computer on my phone i can pull anything up same with dropbox i can uh, all, every single one of my computers is linked through Dropbox. So I have like four different computers. doesn't matter what computer I'm at. I have access to any file I need at any time. And even from my phone. So that's super important for me. What is the daily habit that helps you stay focused on your goals? So I do, uh, Tony Robbins has an exercise called priming. And priming is a combination of meditation, goal setting, 
and gratitude. And um, it really sets you up for your day. So you think about um, three, three times in your life that you've been you know, really happy or uh, have had some sort of ecstasy. Then you think about your goals. You also are met, it just sets you up. So you have the right mindset from the very beginning of the day. And, and it, it sets you up for it. And I think if you can move, you know, for me too. So after that, I, I try to do some sort of exercise. You need to get your body moving as early as possible um, because that's so important because if you're, you know, running around and your, your, your body is tired, your, your mind is going to be tired. So you got to get up, move. And then that gratitude is just so important. And oh, you can, you can get that on uh, YouTube. Just look up uh, Tony Robbins priming. If you want to try it, it's uh, I believe it's like 14 minutes and a half. So if you're listening to this, highly recommend trying it and give it a shot for like a week and see how that makes a difference in your life. Tony Robbins priming. We will definitely link to that as well. What are you curious about right now? Um, for me, the, the curiosity, to, curiosity to me is it's curiosity and worry and excitement. It's all three is technology and the way that it is going to literally change everything. I'm, I've been debating writing a book and that book, I'll get some comments on it, but it's going to be essentially called the digital apocalypse or something like that or social media apocalypse. But, um, it's talking about like, this is really transforming our society in really, uh, I want to say mostly negative way, but how can you leverage that and turn something negative and make it positive? And then also, um, make that part of your business. So, um, you know, take something that again, people are addicted to this, integrate that into your business and make it a, a positive thing that you're able to deliver positivity to people. All right, Josh, you're another Chicago, Chicago land individual. Give me the best place to grab a bite in the city. Um, Oh, that's a good one. I, I, I gotta go with Portillo's. Um, that's like the number one. I, I used to have a joke of like, anytime I fly anywhere, I eat Portillo's just in case, you know, the plane crashes, at least I had a good meal before <laughs> I died. So yeah, for, you can't go wrong with Portillo's. Love Anytime Portillo's. anybody comes in from out of town, I'm like, have you been to Portillo's? Like, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I feel like a hero when I take them there, you know, so yeah. Love it. Close, yeah. Love it. Portillo's is a great place to go check out. Definitely make sure we uh, we put that in there as well. Josh, I got to come back on one question, right? There's a listener out there who says, hey, listen, all that video stuff you talked about, great. Obviously, I know it can work. Sounds great for Josh, but that won't work for me or I don't have the personality. What do you say to someone who maybe doesn't feel that they have the personality or it won't really work as well for them as far as leveraging video for their business? That's a great question. Uh, well, number one, you're going to suck when you start, no matter what. Even if you have an, an amazing personality, it doesn't matter. You're going to, the first video I remember I've ever put out, I'm like, Hi, my name is Josh and I'm going to talk about real estate and real estate investing. Like you don't know how to just be natural. And so, you know, I don't care what your personality is, um, you know, just do it and start putting out content and, um, you know, just know that it's going to suck starting out and that, you know, just like anything, like, you know, when a baby tries to walk and they fall down, do they stop trying to walk? You know, no, they, they, you know, they fall, they cry, and then they get back up and do it again. So video is the same thing. And, <clears throat> you know, with cell phones now, the quality, I mean, I have, you know, this is a, you know, uh, I think this setup here with the camera and the lens is close to like 3000 bucks. You don't need that. Uh, the cell phone now, the camera on that, is I've literally done videos where I'm using this and the cell phone. You can't even tell which one's the cell phone and which is this. So at this point, everybody has a, well, not everybody, but mostly everybody has a smartphone. There's no reason why you can't do video. Uh, there really isn't. And I do think going back to that, what I was talking about, the digital apocalypse, I think if you're not embracing that, <sighs> That's the people that are going to get hurt. And I'm going to talk, that's, that's one of the things I want to talk about in this book is like, if you're not doing this, 
you're literally going to be left behind. So all the agents that are like, well, I don't like the way I look on video or I don't like the way I sound, you know, well, good luck. You're, you're not going to make it. You know, you're going to be discounting your services to, you know, a half a percent or something that's not even sustainable because that's the only way you're going to be able to sell your services by being cheap. Um, so I would say you just get out there, do it. Um, and, you know, you can practice. So if you're going to put out a video, you know, the great thing is you screwed up. So what? Hit record button again and try it again. It's not, um, you know, you can do it and do it and do it until you're happy with it. Um, and really implement, too, I think once you start getting comfortable and being in front of a camera, and I don't do enough of it, but Facebook Lives are huge. A um, lot, like, especially when Facebook Live first came out, they used to notify all of your uh, mm -hmm. your friends that you were going live. So that's an under, like I've literally had crappy Facebook Lives outperform some of my professionally produced content. And, I, and I'm stumbling over my words and, you know, saying things wrong, you know, I'm like, oh, I could have said that. But those videos have more views sometimes than my, than my professional videos. So, um, but, you don't have to start with live, especially if you're nervous, um, but just start with your cell phone. And then um, you can get a little attachment with a little mic or use your headphones like this uh, that come with your, your smartphone. And then you have better sound quality because sound, sound a lot of times is even more important than your, your picture quality. No, I love it. Josh, listen, you have blessed us with a ton of valuable information. Love the way you shared your story and how you leveraged video to stand out both as an agent, as an investor yourself, but then really kind of creating your own videos that are more humorous, more fun, more lighthearted, that are being seen by hundreds of thousands of people, but more importantly, giving tips to other people on how they can create videos and achieve similar success by finding ways to stand out and connect with people. Thank you for coming on the show. We'll be in touch soon, man. And we look forward to talking to you again, okay? All right, John. Hey, thank you again. Big honor. And uh, looking forward to having you back out next year. Make sure to book John Kasman at your next event. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Take care, All buddy. Right. All right, brother. Take care.